。前面有路吗？嗯、哦。Oh, oh, oh. Welcome everybody to another episode of ADV China. We're talking poverty today. So, <laughs> I mean, I know it's not a cheery thing, but there、no. is something I think that needs to be addressed, and it's something that is constantly lied about. Yes, by the leadership in China, and it's something that I think is unfair to Chinese people. We're going to take you on an adventure through some real rural China. It's not even that rural. No. We're just going to show you what real China is. I know you see it in the news all the time. You see the the flashy buildings. You see the Shanghai. You see see Beijing. You see the Olympics. You see all these kind of like fireworks going off and skyscrapers. That's not really China. That's a very small percentage of what China really looks like. So you want to see what real China looks like? Stick around. So anyway, what we're doing here is we're riding through this、uh, fairly urban area. I don't know what would you call this. this I would say it's smack dab like average China. Yeah, average China town that you see in the more rural areas. You can、yeah. see the street food there.、Um, you know, this is the kind of main area of the town. You can see they've got restaurants set up like those plastic things.、Mm-hmm. That's actually where people will sit down and eat. Yeah.、Um, Cell phone shop. Yeah, water on the ground as usual. I hate to、yeah. say it, that's kind of normal. Lots of garbage. Yeah. This is this is kind of typical, right? Now this is the like happening area、yes. of, the, the, of this town. Okay, and we came across this very interesting、um, group of guys who'd kind of welded together this contraption、uh, and made their own weird bicycle thing with old car parts and、uh, and stuff. So we thought, hey, you know, like let's talk to them. You know, you can see here I'm talking to the guy and. Just like, hey man, that thing's awesome. Let me get us out of there so you can actually see it. It's like a normal activity you do in like a small town China.、We're、yeah, into this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah, so really nice dudes. Super, super nice. And we we're just like, hey man, that thing's super interesting. Do you mind if we try it out? And he was like, yeah, no problem. This is what like a a miner basically. It could be a miner. It could be a welder. It's what they do in their spare time. Yeah, yeah de- definitely. Well, they had a little auto auto repair shop type thing there. So, yeah, that kind of that kind of deal. You know, like truck tires and yeah, things, the usual、yeah. things.、So、there you go. It was probably the most uncomfortable <laughs> it thing. So to, hard to ride. Yeah, it was. It was really, really bad. The gearing was obviously so so like high or, or yeah, so low. So sorry, low, so that、yeah. you could、um, actually move this heavy、yeah. car tire thing. So you. Pedal really fast and don't go anywhere. It was pretty fun.、Um, yeah, super fun. So I wanted to get into a little bit of why I really、mm-hmm. morally want to cover this、yeah. from a moral perspective. So Winston and I, when we traveled around the entire country, say for Tibet and Xinjiang, we've、mm-hmm. been every other province, pretty every, much every other place in China. Yeah, we've we noticed something that just flew in the face of everything that the Chinese government keeps trying to portray, and, and I might say successfully portray. Yeah,、um, we're guilty of this as well. We would often focus on the wealth or the new, new developed areas. Yeah, but the average China looks like this, and I'm not even sorry. This is not where people live. This、mm. is the average China where people go buy stuff in、yeah. like a town, right? So, if you look at China, this quote that they keep using is that they're the number two GDP in the world.、Mm. That's just about how much stuff you make or so much、uh, how much stuff you produce.、Yeah. That doesn't translate into how wealthy you are. So it's actually gotten into the psyche of a lot of people that. They can't separate like what per person wealth actually means. Yeah. So you get a lot of people that say, "Oh, China, that's like Japan now. They had a big boom. You know, yeah, they're all rich. GDP,、yeah. Second richest country in the world." They keep saying. Yeah. Well, it's not actually. No. What if I told you that Liaoning, this province that we're in, which is keep in mind in the middle, so it's the average of China. Yeah. Is poorer than Cuba. Yeah, it's crazy.、Right? It's just it's crazy. I wanted to explain what's happening now, by the way.、Mm-hmm. So yeah, poorer than Cuba, like you said, this province. We. Then after we left those guys with a bike in that little town, like the, the name escapes me now, but you know that those those towns blend together.、Yeah. They all look the same. Yeah, I'm、um, so yeah. like you can、They're、go cookie cutter. There you just go. You've got the same kind of restaurants, the same kind of signs, the same kind of activities. You know that's rural China. If it's not、you. meant for tourism, it's going to look the same. It's going to look like、yeah. that. Yeah, we've got so much footage. This isn't. To be honest, we didn't go and like handpick this footage and、no. say this is like a a representation of、uh, poverty or something.、No. This is just a normal. We're going through our library, like、Slice、yeah, let's let's talk about you know China, what it really looks like. So we are leaving this town, and I put into my GPS our destination, okay, which I can't even remember what it was, but it led us down this path that you can see in the background.、Mm. So we get out the town, and it wants us to go through this. Like very rural area in order to get over a mountain, basically. Yes. Okay, and that's what the GPS was saying, and I was like, "This doesn't seem right, but whatever, let's follow it." Right.、Um, so then, what kind of happened was we ended up on this dirt road over here, as you can see, 
Um, and then you can see where the people actually live, the people that go down into that town to hang out and buy stuff. And uh, you're asking this lady over here, this very interesting uh, one-legged lady. She's missing a leg, yeah. Yeah, one-legged lady with her geese and chickens. Legless, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, that she was like, this happens a lot, by the way. You're like, can we go? Is there a road up there? And she's like, yes, go that way. Go that way. Well, I was asking her. I knew the town. Right? Yeah. So I said, where's the town? She's very confident in her response. Yeah, just go this way. Just go this way. Guess what? That, just, that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> well, um, it went somewhere. Yeah, it went to, to like a goat path. Yeah. This is garbage! No wonder her grades are so low. Listening to this, this trash all day! Cyber stalking is a real thing. When you've got somebody who really wants to find out about you, they can employ all sorts of tactics to figure out your IP address, where you are, your internet service provider, the city, the town. It's very easy for them to get a good idea about your movements. We personally have an army of stalkers. In fact, we have the 50 cent army of stalkers after us the entire time. That's why we use NordVPN. You may not have a massive army of stalkers like we do trying to find out our every moves, but you never know who's out there trying to figure out your information, whether it be a hacker or maybe just a weird obsessed ex-boyfriend or girlfriend. So keep yourself safe by using NordVPN. In 2022, NordVPN celebrates its 10 year anniversary by giving away a surprise gift. New subscribers will either get one month, one year, or two years on top of the huge discount, plus one free month. Don't forget to go to nordvpn.com slash advchina. So what happens often, and this mm. is, you guys might find this fast, either fascinating or infuriating, yeah. it can be both. Yeah. In China, it's even on the driver's license exam yeah. as a multiple choice question. It says, if someone's asking you for directions, what do you do? One of them says, give them the directions. And one of them's like, oh, if you don't know, lie and make up directions. <laughs> and one of them says, ignore them. Yeah. Right. And a lot of times, the reason they have to make that a question is this bizarre cultural phenomenon where people actually give you wrong directions on purpose just to make you leave. Yeah, just to get rid of you. It's also part of face culture. Yeah. They also don't want to be like, I don't know. Mm. If you say, well, Buzhida, I don't know, that's more of a loss of face than if you just give someone wrong directions and they just get I lost. know, it's so annoying. <laughs> How many times have you asked somebody and they're just like, chim in, chim in. Yeah. Just yeah. like ahead, ahead, yeah. or like down there, and you're like, Take okay, left. thanks. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's the complete opposite direction from where you're supposed to go. And it actually goes deeper than that. It goes even with people you know. For yeah. example, like my wife told me this. Actually, I've heard this multiple times. If your parents, you know, are trying to find the way and you know the way, yeah. right? And they're like, no, I take a left here. And you say, no, you need to take a right. It's on the GPS. Yeah. You need to take a right. They will say no, and they'll go forward with the wrong directions, even knowing so, because they need to be right. Yeah, right? it's the whole face thing. And if you, even if you were right in the end, you can't say that you were right. Yeah, they'll be uh, like, "This is actually a better route." It's actually a better route. It's just they changed like the, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's a detour. <laughs> yeah, you kind of get kind of used to that. Anyway, so here we are in the more like rural parts of that area. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the structures, you see. A lot of people live here and you, you'll also see we've got there are people walking on the side of the road etc etc but this is kind of china you know this is it's not a poor see. province no. not even a poor town very yeah. average what is the you know what would you say the percentage of people that live in this kind of situation are at least 40 percent yeah right so when you read statistics about china you're gonna think oh wow it's completely urbanizing yeah yeah but almost half of the population still lives in conditions like this. Yeah, right? I mean, look, here we got a dude herding his goats. Right. Um, Which is whatever, I, right? I mean, but it's, that's, it's a simple life. Yeah. The, the fact of the matter is there's nothing wrong with this lifestyle. I'm not trying to say that no. herding goats and living in a shack in the, in a, in the rural mountainside or whatever mm. is bad. No. It's just that this is a reality. Right. And this is a reality that China tries to hide. That's well said. You know, and it's very frustrating because every time you want to talk about this kind of thing and point out that this is a reality in China, you get a slew of people trying to attack you and, and defend China as being modern and lifting everybody out of poverty and so on. Meanwhile, this is actually what China's like. There's been a trend of a lot of videos. There's, there are paid influencers that we've mm. spoken about many times. Um, in China, and they pay Westerners to go make China look good. Yeah. The whole Ch China is trying to basically look like a first world country. Yes. When in fact, the reality is this is not even taken that long ago. This yeah. is what the, the reality of China is. You will never see this kind of stuff on their channels. Yeah. So when these paid influencers or paid YouTubers go out, 
they'll call a video like, this is like this is a real hidden China, deep secret China, you know, to make it look like you're going to see. <laughs> and something. then they'll show you a new project like an underground railway or a, a high speed train or an airport or something. The reality is when you go around mm. with a government minder yeah. and a government person that literally has an itinerary for you, they're never, ever going to take you here. And yeah. this is not something we have to go searching deep for in no, China. Look. This is something we see every single day if you just have your own means of transportation. So yes. when you see these people that go out there to get paid to make China look very rich or whatever, the reality is that China is about somewhere in the middle of the world. It's yes. nowhere near the developed world. No. In fact, most of the country that we would go on, you would be able to see in your own vehicle is third world. Correct. It is not a developed country. And the thing is, just because the leader of China, Xi Jinping, can say we've eradicated poverty, it just means that these people aren't allowed to talk about poverty yeah. anymore. Well, I mean, you can see here they're doing a little bit of construction in the, the rural area, kind of destroying nature's whatever. <laughs> That's well. kind of common. We've got lots of clips of that uh, in different parts of the country. But, you know, again, it's not that um, China's poor and we're not trying to do anything like that. But the fact of the matter is if you try to show this footage mm -hmm. and you try to show the people living there, it'll be completely wiped off the internet yeah. will be denied they yes. will deny no this doesn't exist in china right. that's what's really freaking annoying is yeah. all those paid influences yeah. they won't acknowledge that this is a, a real thing no. in china and the government won't acknowledge that this is how people live in china they just won't not to the outside world but within china everybody knows oh yeah it's not a see if you talk to these people here they're not going to be like yeah we're the poorest people in the country they know that this is how the average person lives correct this is just it's not fascinating it's no. not special it's not something to be celebrated and it's not something to be looked down upon it's just reality on top of that like if you are in the big city centers like say uh, shenzhen or guangzhou or whatever the case the people that you see there come from here yes you know of course like you know initially the, yeah. yeah the young the the young girl working as a waitress uh, at your table she, whenever you know chinese new year rolls around she's going back to a very similar place to this That's a right. lot of the time because mm -hmm. remember we're talking about almost half the population lives in these areas and a lot of them come from that and i think a really good counterpoint to that is you're correct mm -hmm. there's a huge migrant population in these cities and there's also a local population in these cities that refuse to believe that this is a reality. That's true. When we say yeah. this is a reality, we mean this is a real thing that's happening. This is a real uh, possibility of life. This is how mm. people live. And if you ask someone in our in our our family, right? Yeah. If you ask them about this and say like, oh, where would you see yourself on the spectrum of wealth? They would be very high. Yeah. Not the highest, but very high. Correct. Right? Yeah. And we're talking about people that would be making about ten thousand dollars per year. Yeah. Right. Per year. Yeah. That would be considered quite high. Yes. Now, when you talk to someone like that, they refuse to believe that somebody's making 800 RMB a month. Yeah. Right? They refuse to believe that there are people, a huge chunk of the population that's pulling in under two thousand dollars per year. On right? top of that, don't forget international students that yes. end up in Australia, yep. in America, all over the place. They can't represent. They don't even know that this this no. is part of China because they've grown up in uh in wealth and yes. in privilege and so they get sent to study overseas they don't believe that no. there's anything like this in china and i just wanted to finish off by saying yeah. like that guy that's welded the bike together that we hung out with for a while yeah really nice gentleman sure you know really really fun dude very hospitable nice if you asked him anything he would have taken you there yeah the people that we're talking about, the people, the international student types, and don't demonize everyone. No, no, of course. But those, the, those types that come from wealth and money, would never speak to that person. No. They would look at them as subhuman. Yeah. And I'm not joking. They would say, "Why would I ever talk to someone like that? They're yeah. absolute scum." Right. Sure. And that's the issue: is that there's a massive disconnect, and that's also why this lie is perpetuated that China is the second richest country in the world when it's actually like the 90th. Yeah. Is because there's a huge disconnect with the people that go represent China abroad as well. Correct. Right. They don't actually, if they know, they deny, and if they don't know, then they're not going to perpetuate the actual truth. Yeah. So if you see, you know, the rich Chinese students with LV bags and and Ferraris and things like that, we call them four or die. Mm -hmm. Usually government connected. In fact, all of them are because their parents got wealthy through the government. Yeah. That's how it works in China. That's Guan or die. Yeah. The government ones. Yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, you're d basically dealing with um, the privilege very like one percent you yeah. know the one percenters yeah. oh 1%. yeah that's well said and if you want to really see a proper representation of what china is it's this that we're driving through is half of what china, how chinese people live it's not fascinating no. it's not romantic it's no. just real and then you get a very big middle class and then you get a small but very powerful very rich upper class a huge you know? issue and one of the reasons that winston and i wanted to do documentaries like this mm. was because when we would go around 
we're not like super bleeding heart or anything, but we would meet people that were very genuine, very yeah. friendly, offer us food, hang out, teach us about their local area. We learned so much about China just by cutting ties with anyone that wanted to show us around. Yeah. And just me and you heading out there, sure. making friends, meeting people. And that changed. It didn't change our mind about China. It developed our mind about China into thinking this is a pretty cool country. Yeah. And the problem is we wanted to represent that because none of these people ever get any sort of spotlight. No. Not to the point of everyone deserves to have a uh, professional camera on them sure. and they want their 15, minute, 15 minutes of fame. What I'm talking about is any sort of representation. Correct. These people are meant to be deleted off of the spectrum. Yeah. And when you see people that are promoting this huge urban dream of China, this mm -hmm. massive like skyscraper stuff and saying that this poverty and stuff has been alleviated, all of these let's say six, seven hundred million people, mm. are they vanish. They don't yeah. exist anymore. So when you see influencers pushing the idea that these people don't exist, what they're doing is effectively wiping that proportion it's of population it's, out. It's insulting to these people. Yeah. It's as if, like you said, it's as if they don't exist. They don't deserve to exist. And they don't, exer they don't deserve to improve their life. Because yeah. the fantasy is that China, the Chinese government is so infinite in its, in its uh, charity mm -hmm. that it helps all these people out of poverty. When in fact, what they do is they make you not think they're real. Yes. And then they don't have to do anything about it. Correct. Here you can see like a dude walking on the side of the road here. You know, that guy, he exists. Yeah. You know, the people out here in the rural parts of China exist. And it's not even that rural. This is not no, that far out of the, the main towns You know, that town, that town where you saw, that's not even where people live. This is where, mm. That's where people buy stuff. This yeah. is where the people live. Yeah. And here's the deal. Those 12 lane highway megastructures and those... Uh, high-speed rail uh, videos you keep seeing mm. and these huge dam projects and these huge like uh, solar farm sure. encompassing entire mountainscapes this is the reality of china yeah. right you can do all that stuff but that doesn't improve the lives of these people no it's just for international face yeah for most of the time it's terrible they could have used that money to really improve the lives of these people here a lot of instance. people a lot of people ask why we we decided to talk about this kind of stuff number one we we weren't able to when no, we were in no china. when we were in china we, we we'd be arrested yeah. right but number two it's like it kind of builds up it yeah. kind of boils up because like again when you keep seeing headlines and keep seeing people talk about how china's success story whether yeah. it's about with covid or about gdp numbers or whatever you know that it's like it's almost like in, impossible to not talk about because you know how wrong that actually Absolutely. is. Absolutely. You know, there's another thing. Whenever poverty is spoken about in China, it's always a positive spin. How the government has lifted all these people out of poverty, 800 million people out of poverty. What's not discussed is the fact that the government put those 800 million into poverty in the first place. It's the same government right now that oversaw the starvation and famine and which killed 50, 80 million people. Uh, you know, we don't know how 50 much. 50 to 80 million. 50 yeah. to 80 million people died during the famine. Worst famine in history of mankind. Yeah. The Great Leap Backwards and the Cultural Devolution. More people died during that time than Hitler and Stalin combined. Yep. You know what I mean? More people died than the genocide of the Native Americans over a period of 100 years. Died in those very few years. All right. And a it's, lot of it was malicious. Yes. <laughs> it's awful. It's absolutely terrible. And it's the same government. Yeah. So, you know, all of these bad policies by the government really messed the entire country up, destroyed the culture and put everybody into this very impoverished state. But because of propaganda and because of the soft power from the Chinese government, you're meant to believe that that's just not the case. Yeah. And we refuse to let people f like forget what the reality is. Yeah. The only way that the people got lifted out of poverty is when the government took its boot heel off of their heads and said, okay, you can engage in capitalism, you can start running your own businesses, you can start engaging with the outside world. When Deng Xiaoping, he's the guy who said, okay, let's open up, you know, and allow foreign investment At and all that. experiment. Yeah, experiment. Yeah. That's what allowed China to lift, well, the Chinese people to lift themselves out of poverty. The government didn't do it. All the no. government ever did was say, okay, we're going to stop being so communist and crappy for a little bit. Would it surprise you that the, the economy is in a downturn right now in China? because the current leadership is going back to the old bad tested policies that yes. did not work in the past. Yeah, just like under Mao Zedong, now yeah. Xi Jinping wants the exact same thing. He wants to be another Mao and the way he's closing everything down is negatively affecting China in a big way. So I hope you guys learned something there. We just yeah. want to we don't want to harp on about this, but we'd like you to understand what's really happening. Correct. So next time you see this whole like, oh, China's so rich and best GDP and, you know, lifted everyone out of poverty. Remember that what you're seeing here in the background is still a very big reality in China and it's not going away anytime soon. No. Anyway, until next time, thank you very much for joining us. 
Can't wait to see you in the next ADV China adventure. And until then, stay awesome.